You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. You're listening to Marriage Takeover with Eric and Tamika Thompson, helping to enrich your marriage. Hey, how am I doing? <laughs> we are trying to get some technical stuff together, and I am. We are on YouTube. We are on Facebook Live. We are on Blog Talk Radio Live. When Christians speak, Blog Talk Radio Live. And for whatever reason, I cannot pull up my Facebook so that I can see all my comments. So, hey, hey, people. We thank you so much for joining us. We are trying to get this technical stuff down packed. I know that there is a football game going on, but we are going to keep moving in stride. Somebody post the, the stats, the, you know, what is it, the score to the game, and we're going to keep it rolling. We're going to start off a prayer. Mm. You want me to start off? Okay. <laughs> Father heaven, Lord God, we want to tell you thank you, Lord. We give you the praise, all the glory and honor, Lord God. We just ask that you just have your way. Yes. God, God, we give you all the glory and honor, Lord God. Father, we thank you for this day. Father, for this is the day that you have made, God. We're going to rejoice and be glad within it. So, God, I pray now, God, that you, God, order our steps, God, order our words, Father, in the name of yes, Jesus, Lord. God, you speak, because you already know. Who is listening, Father, that this may occur in the hearts of your people, Father, in the name of Jesus. And, God, we want to tell you thank you. We thank you for what you're doing and how you're doing it. Father, say this prayer, your daughter, son, Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> it is October, the middle of October. We are getting ready for the holidays. So we want to come and check in and talk with you guys about the in-laws for the holidays. So we are, let's see here. All right, we're going to get it going. Let me see here. See, like, no matter how, how we try early we together, try. <laughs> always thought to be something. Oh, no matter how early we try to get the technology together, it is always something. So, um, a couple of things before we get started. Today's show is being brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial subscription. Just go to audibletrial.com slash takeover and browse through the unmatched selections of the audiobooks and the programs, download a title free, and start listening today. It's just that easy. Go to the audibletrial.com slash takeover. We just want to thank God. We want to thank um, our listeners, our viewers, the podcast viewers. The podcast is available anywhere <laughs> podcasts are available on Apple and Droid and online platforms under Marriage Takeover. And we're being listened to and aired in eight different countries, so we're really excited about that. And excited about the growth. And our first official date night is yes. coming up on this Friday, October 25th at 6 p.m. So you've probably seen the flyer kind of perusing around the area. Uh, I want to make sure that you, if you're in the D.C. metropolitan area, visit MerrickTakeover.com to register. Registration is free, but you must register so that the chef can have enough food prepared. Each couple will pay for their own meal, so let's make sure that we understand that. And we will also have, like, a giveaway. So I want to make sure that um, we are all excited about that. And, We're excited. And if you want date nights to come to a city near you, inbox us. Go to um, marriagetakeover at gmail.com. Send us an email. Say, hey, listen, we want marriage takeover in, a city, in our city. And we will put that on the calendar for 2020 so that we can come out and have marriage takeover date night in your area. All right, so we are going to go ahead and get started with the show. I I'm we Eric. Didn't I'm, I'm Tamika. I'm not Eric. I'm Tamika. <laughs> I'm Eric. I thought right. we had already gotten started. My bad. My bad. Your bad. My All bad. right. So we are ready to rock and we are ready to roll. So here is dealing with some of the in laws. So the holidays are coming. We got Thanksgiving coming and we got Christmas coming as well. So next month, people are probably already preparing and trying to get things started for your families coming. 
whether you're going to have both sides of your family coming or whether you're going to only have one side of your family coming. Some people, they don't have a problem with their families, their in-laws. And then there are some others who, you know, maybe it's an issue where um, that's a challenge for you. <laughs> and so we just want to offer some helpful tips. If this is not your thing, send it over to somebody else who it is their thing that's going to bless them. All right? So just to start off, sometimes the parents, I don't think they realize some of the problems that their married children kind of experience as they're trying to balance their loyalties to their own parents as well as their in-laws and then also to their spouse. Well, I mean, even when you even when you look at it, it's um, the, the question is is do you do you remain the same uh, when you are how do you put it? Do you remain the same when your in-laws come to town, when mom and daddy come to town, or <laughs> uh, when you know when your in-laws, your in your mother-in-law or father-in-law come to town? Do you still keep the same type of um, one relationship, two order going, or do you change due because of their presence? So can I be honest with y'all? I was the one that changed. I was like one person at home, you know, being the wife. And then when I got around my family, and I don't know what it was, I got around I family, know. and it was just. She thought she was running things. Yeah, I was just like, I don't okay. know, because maybe because in one instance, you know, I'm the daughter, I'm the niece, I'm the, you know, the cousin who always, you know, was kind of in charge and running things or doing things or contributing to things. And now all of a sudden I have to take a different role when it comes to family during the holiday time. So I, I struggled with trying to balance that. I really did. If I could be 100% honest, I struggled when, I, when it was time for me to balance that. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. It just What's seems, you doing? It just seems so different right now. Why is it different? I, I don't know. It just seems so, it just seems so different. Um, when you, how you put it, because sometimes that we have the hardest time establishing our home because understand you're taking you're taking two backgrounds you're taking your wife's background you're taking your background and then when you mix in the in-laws now you have an agreeable background versus versus the foundation that you have set for your family okay and so when you when you have set the foundation for your household Things tend to change because when you have like uh, when you have I guess the same background coming to play. Some you I guess I say it's kind of like um, oh what's the word I'm looking for? I'm gonna play some music in the background or something. Why wow, we don't <laughs> ever so, have music on in the so, background? It just seems so, so it seems so empty. It really does. Well, you want to pray again? I don't I know do. what's going on. I know I'm trying to get this technology right. I that's probably what be, must be the distraction. But Okay, let's pray. Like I said, I'm, I'm not opposed God. to that. Go ahead and pray. Did you pray? I did pray. So, God, we thank you, Lord. We honor you. We bless your name. And we just ask, Lord, that you would have your way, God, in the name of Jesus, in the midst of this, of this, this broadcast. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would just move in the mighty name of Jesus. We yes. bind and hinder every distraction in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And ask, God, that you would have your way, God. Have your way, Father. We ask that you would move, God, that you would breathe over this broadcast, that you would have your way, that it would be a blessing unto your people, Lord, that yes. it would speak volumes, God, that it would give encouragement, that it would do exactly what you set it out to do and to be for the people that are married, for your children, God, to help them to overcome, yep. to defeat the enemy, Lord. The enemy is already defeated, and so to defeat the enemy, Mm. to give us tools and resources and arsenal, God, that we will be able to encamp, God, what you would have for us to do, that we will be able to have that flow in the kingdom, God, that you would have us to be with the marriages, God, that we would be strong, God, that you would rebuild, God, that you would build up, God, that you would restore, God, that you would have your way, God, that you would impart love. And so, Satan, we bind you in the name of Jesus. Come on now. Remove every distraction in the mighty name, in of, the Jesus. name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We ask God that you would have your way. Every technical distraction, from the microphones to the internet to the technology to the Wi-Fi, we rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. God, we ask that you would have your way. We are asking now, Holy Spirit, flow. Mm-hmm. We are asking now, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your we way. are asking now, God, that you would be magnified in the mighty in name, the name of, Jesus. of Jesus. God, we honor you in the name of Jesus with this broadcast. And we yes, ask God that God. you would continue to have your 
way, God. Lord, let us remain humble, God, as you do the elevation, God. Let us remain humble, God, as you are imparting into those marriages and relationships. Let us remain humble, God, as you do the work, God, and as you rebuild, God, as you repair, as you restore, as you, God, have your way and you mend the relationship. In the name of Jesus, Mm. we ask, God, that you would continue to rule and reign. In the mighty name of Jesus, now, Holy Spirit, fill this atmosphere, God. We ask, God, that you would have your way, God, that we would move forward and that you would give us the wisdom, that you would give us the guidance, that you would give us everything that we would need, God, for this broadcast as we move forward to be able to deal with our in-laws. Let us be able to do that in love. Let us to be able to do that in peace and in joy, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Lord, we ask, God, that you would give wisdom. Yep. We ask that you would give guidance. Yes. And we ask that you take over in this broadcast in the mighty in the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. And we magnify you, God. Mm. We honor you, Lord, because it is due your name. And we ask, Lord, that you would just be magnified in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. God, we glorify you. And we ask, God, that you just continue to have your way. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Bring it up, Jesus. Yes. Wow. But you know, it's um, you know, one thing I come to understand is that when you look at Matthew nineteen, uh, like four through six, it says, And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he that he that he which made them in the be- at the beginning made them male and female? And he said, For this cause shall a man leave Father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they and they twine shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twine but one flesh. Um what therefore God has joined together, let no man put us under. And so and, but that's the but that's the thing because like I I remember when my mother in law, this I wanna say this had to be the first time that I think I thought we were gonna say that for the bonus. No? Oh, my bad. I guess mine was a lot. <laughs> mine was a lot better. But anywho, I'm I, I'm not gonna go there. But it came. I want to say like maybe the first couple years, and I do mean a couple years that when we um uh, when uh when we first got married, because I want to say it got to the point where I didn't want to go home because of the change that would take place, and I'd be like, listen, I ain't got time to be going home, um dealing with the same dealing with old crap. When when it's new, when this is what we do, I understand because one thing when you go back home, you deal with or when you go back home or when home comes to you or where you grew up comes to you, then there comes a there becomes a there comes a familiar spirit that comes along with it because right. of hey this is what I this is what I do this is what I did growing up so does that mean I get to do I, does that mean I can do the same things again? No, not really, because the thing is that one, when you have established a foundation of your own home, then you have to now you have to consider your you have to consider your husband or your wife. Right, right. So just a sidebar and a side note: YouTube, although we see that it's recording, it's not on live. They can't see us on YouTube. It looks like it's still waiting for the show to start. Sorry about that. That's okay. So um, you're right. So there were some things that you had to change and that you have to adjust. And so for me, that was a hard adjustment because, like I said, I was the daughter. Not only was I the daughter, like I was the oldest daughter. So, you know, when you're the oldest, you have a greater level of responsibility. So when I was home, there was a greater level of responsibility that I had, and it was a matter of there were certain things that when I was home or when I was around family, like I adapted back to that behavior. Mm -hmm. I did not remain submissive in a sense of, you know, I'm basically according to the foundation that was set. Right. For our home. For our home. So I didn't remain. So it was really hard for me. So, so for example, we, (laughs) and to hear Eric tell the story, like it's hilarious because he would be like, it's like we're up in the air, and the moment we hit land on the airport, oh my god! It's just like it's the dangerous. moment we hit the tarmac, the tarmac it's it's like, like oh, this is like real me. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? And I was like, well, are you serious? And for years, I did not realize that I was changing. I had to was be like, why do you change when you get around yeah. your people? It started that way because I'm like, wait a minute. But it was so funny because. 
one thing I come to understand is that when you allow patience to have its perfect work in you, it allows you to sit back and observe. Right. And so when I sit back and observe, like the first couple of years, going home, <laughs> I am, I am. As soon as we land, but as soon as we get to the airport, we're raw, raw. As soon as we get there, <laughs> la la la, la la la. Like, wait a minute. Oh my god. It wasn't like this five minutes ago. What is really going on? And so, uh, <laughs> and so, but but that's the thing because when you come into a place of familiar, you sometimes sometimes we often forget. Of what we have, what we have established when the in laws come around, right? But see, one thing I do love, I love the in laws. I'd be like, "Uh, uh-uh, baby, no, you ain't home no more. Mm-mm. You need to do what you do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know how you know how the mothers do. You know, even the fathers when they dealing with they true. when they dealing with them son. Ah, oh, champ, you know you don't do that when we ain't here. Stop playing. Yeah. I hate for her to hear me up while we gone. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's like you know because one thing that I, one thing that I love about because this is the thing. Granted, there are some there are literally some marriages that are I mean excelling, but sometimes the in laws don't like the don't like either whether it be the husband or the wife because of whatever differences, or sometimes it can be you know vice versa, whatever the role may be. But then it's like, how do you make that establishment? With your with your parents with your parents and your spouse, because like listen, she ain't, she or he ain't going nowhere. You know right. what I'm saying? We're building upon our relationship. So either if you continue with this, then how will you actually get to know who your spouse really is? Right, right. And like I said, I don't think sometimes. And, and then here's the caveat, because then there are some times where. The in-laws uh, don't have the best interest, and they don't have your best interest at heart. But I think a lot of times, and for the most part, the in-laws, they don't, I don't think they understand the challenges of you being able to balance, like you being a child, as well as you also now being, you know, a husband <laughs> or I a remember. wife. I remember. I remember. We was living in Alaska. I have to say, I have to say this one. We was living in Alaska. We came home for was it Christmas? No, or Thanksgiving. It was, it was in May. No, was it? We came hot. home for something. I thought it was May. Okay, it that's right. Because so during breakup, it right? Was hot. So I remember we came home. We came home for whatever the reason may be. It was just after the buy all, spend all your money holidays. But we came home. For whatever reason, and so we was at my mom's. We was at my mom's house, and go ahead, go ahead. And so we was at my mom's house, and so my mom asked me. She says, um, "She says, baby, can you cut the grass?" Now I'm originally from Florida, from Tallahassee, Florida. One time for Tallahassee, but I'm from I'm from originally from Tallahassee, Florida. So I leave Alaska, and I think it was like negative thirty degrees. And at that time, it was warm. Maybe it wasn't negative 30. No, it was in the negative because we haven't hit breakup yet. So it was, it was March. May. No, it was, it was March. March. Okay. Because okay. we haven't hit breakup yet. Okay. And so when we, when we, you know what? No, I think she's right. I, I think so it must have been 30 degrees. Right. I think it was yeah, 30. Yeah, it was 30 degrees. And so we leave in Alaska coming to the Sunshine State. And when we got now, mind now, you know how it is when you're in the airport. It's nice and cold, you know, freezing in the airport. To us, it was like a sunny day in the in the airport. I stepped outside to see if my brother was out there to pick us up. I was outside for two minutes, came back inside, drink, drink, and sweat. And it sweat was so humid. It was so hot. It and was, hot. She say hot. She say humidity. It, it was, it was hot. And it, it was humid. It was <laughs> nine o'clock at night, and it was ninety eight degrees. Oh, well, so that was humid and hot. Yeah, mind now, when you're coming from, your body adjusts to the area that you're in. So right. now it's like, you know, my blood is a lot more thicker because of the temperatures that we live in. And so my mom, when we got to my mom's house, it was like whatever, I forgot whatever day it was. It was in the morning. My mom asked me, you know, I'm an early bird. I get up. <laughs> she asked me, she says, baby, can you cut the grass? Now, Let's just say when you want to push more in a big yard, we talking about an acre. Now let's remind you, let's just you, do an acre. We got in at 
nine o'clock was the flight. No, we flew. flew in. Right, we flew in the Tampa though. It was ninety eight degrees right. at that time. That night, at night. It so was imagine how the temperature is the following morning. It was nine o'clock in the. It was it was six o'clock in the morning. It was already ninety degrees outside. Now I'm not an early bird, but no. I, I heard this. <laughs> and so I said, and so man, I tell you, I said. I came back, you know, you can't tell your mom, no, you know, I'm still the baby of the family. So, you know, mom asked, sure, no problem. Now, he hadn't cut grass in <laughs> what? We've been I haven't cut a bit grass. Years. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we were in Alaska, and, you know, our our yard was what? Real small. Real small. Just whoop, 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 we're done. <laughs> I'm done. Five minutes, yard's cut. I'm done. But here we're talking about an acre. Oh, one full acre with a push mower, not a ride. <laughs> A push. <laughs> so my mom says to me, she says, uh, listen, can you cut the grass for me? I said, <laughs> sure, no problem. So I go sit on the bed. My wife wakes up, which is surprising because I say she's I'm not, not an early bird. So she says to me, she says, uh, what are you doing? I said, I'm about to cut the grass. She said, oh, no, you not. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't always say no. This morning you had to see a moment. So when she um when she um uh, when she saw that I was when she saw what I was getting ready to do, she was like, uh, Mima, that's what all the grandkids all the grandkids call that. I was like, uh, Mima, I'm sorry, but Eric has Eric is not gonna cut this grass. She's like, Mima, it is already ninety degrees. We just left an area of thirty. She was like, I don't see why you can't cut no grass. She was like, you know what? So here's my question. <laughs> We've been gone for two years. Who's been cutting your grass? <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and she was like, well, I'll pay. She was like, well, I was like, well, I'll pay somebody to cut the grass. <laughs> He's not going to cut the grass. Right. I don't see why he can't cut the grass. Me, Ma, my husband is not going to get out there and pass out because it's too hot. It is 90 degrees. I'm telling you, see that? I'm sitting in the room like a little kid. Ooh. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting in the room like a little kid. Go ahead, baby. Do it. Go ahead and tell it. But it was it was it was so funny because then what what it what it looked like after that was like basically was like basically their thought of how my house was running, but it was just her taking care of her husband. Because right. you know me as a because listen, there's always more than one way to skin a cat. Right. And so so we were gonna get it done. Yeah, we were like gonna cut it. Grass is gonna be cut. I just want for to cut it. I'm serious. I was already praying. Lord, please, please don't let me pass out. <laughs> it was coming. First time ever. I don't know if you're in Florida. You got them little. You got them little garden snakes. You got water moccasins. <laughs> so and you got the gators. We talk about we talk about an acre, so I don't have to cut the grass butt naked. <laughs> to keep cool. Please not butt naked. <laughs> no, we are not sharing the jewels. <laughs> but um, but 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 those are literally like the kind of things that you will kind of run into, and so you have to make sure that you keep every. You have to basically make sure that you keep a level headed because it's just like. Even though the in laws are, are, are in town, the, the in laws are at the house having fun, right. everybody having good having good fun, but you still gotta remember who you are supposed to cleave to. And then not only that, you number one, remember who you're supposed to cleave to, but then set boundaries in advance. Yeah. So now we know Thanksgiving is coming in for us because we're both from the same town. We grew up in the same town. Whenever we go back home, we had to alternate who we were going to be staying with because, of course, every time I went home, my mom wanted me to come home, and then every time he comes home, his mom wants him home. So we had to alternate it so that we can keep a balance and we can keep a steady flow and kind of keep peace in the home. Uh-huh. So we stayed with, you know, one family one year we went and another family the another time we went, and then we would always be able to meet up and have time and spend time with the other family, but it was something that we had to set and establish a boundary for ourselves. Mm-hmm. So as you're getting ready to go into Thanksgiving, determine, okay, sit down and determine where are we going to go, whose family, whose house are we going to go to. All right, so what are some of our family standards? Right. What do we decide as a family, as one unit that we're going to do as we're going out? Right. So now, and, and just, you know, kind of put that out there. I love my mother-in-law. She is my mother-in-love. 
we have a, a beautiful relationship now. So that was when we were first, you know, married, and I was stubborn as all out the world. I got stubborn, boy. I'm praying for you. I was... <laughs> I was stubborn as all outdoors, but there were still some challenges that we had to face. And then even after my mom passed, there were some additional hurdles and challenges that I had to face just because I didn't want anybody to feel like I was trying to replace my mom with somebody with somebody else. Mm. And so for me, I was still guarded That's in good. that area after my mom passed. And so whenever we would kind of get around family, there were certain things or certain avenues where I would let my mother in love in. And then some certain areas where I wouldn't let her in because, you know, that was safeguarded for my mom. Mm-hmm. So it's important to know who you are. Right. It's important to establish those boundaries in advance. Right. So when we go, there are certain, you know, we go and we visit everybody. We go and do certain things. But, you know, I'm very protective when it comes to my children. So there are some places my kids that you just not going over to such and such cousin house and having a good time and you and mommy's not there. Like, you're just not going to go. So understanding that in advance, right. when we get to that conversation and dinner is over with and we get somebody, hey, why don't you let the kids come over? No, we're good. We're good. <laughs> because we've already set that standard in right. advance. And there, and, there's no, and there won't be no issues, no problem. Because the thing is that when you are, how can I put it? When you are, when you set the boundary, now everybody knows moving forward because it's what you agreed on. Right. It's what you agree, so it does not matter come whatever it may be the great thing or it might be the bad thing. It doesn't matter because you've already, within your household, upon the foundation that you have already set, hey, this is not what we're going to cross. And my thing is, you know, make sure you keep a good even playing field because, you know, honestly, I hate to say it, but, you know, we on one side of the track, her folks on another side on of the other track. Side. We grew up with the thugs, you know what I'm saying, them hustlers. <laughs> they grew up with um, the Porter's family and, uh, <laughs> you know, Little House on the Prairie. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? We, were, we were decent. <laughs> so, it's like, you know what I mean? So it's like you now you already have that one barrier just because of, one, the lifestyle. Right. And that's important to note, too, because, like I said, it, it was different because of the lifestyle, which is why, and I think we did it a couple of episodes ago, when you are getting married, set your foundation for your family. Right. Whether it's just you and your spouse or whether you have kids, set that foundation because as you move forward and as you lead and cleave to one another, right. that foundation is what's going to be able to sustain you. Right. So enforce that. I know there were times where, you know, Eric is the baby. I'm the oldest. So there yeah, were certain that things was different where, right, there. right, there were certain things that I was accustomed to already doing and moving and breeding and, you know, just taking control over certain situations because my mom was a single mom. And so I was already accustomed to taking care of my sister. I was already accustomed to taking, just, care, of things. taking care of things because she worked. Being the so, head honcho. Right. So as she worked, I was responsible for making sure that we ate. I was responsible for making sure that the house was clean. I was responsible for a certain amount of things. And so as we're getting together and we're moving, and it was a matter of Eric, things had been done for him all his life because he was the baby. Now, I won't say done for me. Let's just say. Well, things are made easier. I had an easier right. way. <laughs> <laughs> so things are made easier. So imagine when we all got together and, you know, as the family was getting together and they were still treating him like the baby. Right. So if, if, even when it comes to, and then I'll say this as well before I, I, you know, transition over. It's also really important that as the challenges arise, ladies, allow your husband to check and to enforce those boundaries with their parents. Mm. And also, husband, you also have to allow your wife to lay those boundaries. And with the parents, what she just said. <laughs> that was just right. so heavy. Because the thing is, if I try to, <laughs> well, you already know how to try. <laughs> when I tried to take mom, she was like, look, Slim, I don't know. Come here, let me put you over my knee. <laughs> Wait a minute. And, don't you dare hit me. <laughs> and it causes conflict when you don't do that. So it causes conflict when I text his mom or when I set certain boundaries because they didn't, and, and I don't, I don't know if it was because 
it was direct or if it was because it came off as disrespectful Who do you think or, you are? or what it was, but there were certain things that we had already established with our children. Right. There were certain things that we had already established within our relationship right. that we just weren't going to allow outside forces to come in, and that was on both sides of on our both family. Both sides, right, right. And so it was a matter of, all right, so make sure now that we have this, when we get in front of your family, I don't want you changing the script. Don't start tripping. Don't, don't. But the thing, the funny thing is, it is so easy to do because you come, you come back custom to what's familiar. And that's the thing. That is a heavy piece because you're now in a familiar place that you have to now begin to deal with within yourself and know because it's the one thing, the one thing is that when you have your background and I have my background, we have to now mesh our backgrounds to what works for our household, for our marriage and the things that we do. And in doing so, that is what we begin to take out and present to others because of this is just how how we flow. Right. And so, therefore, we have to also be careful in the things that we do and say when the in-laws come in to come to, come to town. Now, I, you know, I, I love my mother-in-law because, Mom treated me like a son from day one. You know what I'm saying? But there was still a barrier that I really could not cross because of when you kind of have that type of, um, because I guess I say because I wasn't brought up. I think I had to deal. I think, I think I had to deal more with your aunts and uncles than I had to yeah. deal with mom. They was they was Trump fighting. They was what? like, who are you? Where you come oh, from? What, where you come what from? What, 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 what that you claim? <laughs> I say, hold up, Slim. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Yes. Wait a yes. minute. I would say even my <laughs> even my sister-in-law, she couldn't stand me. Ooh, that girl couldn't stand me. Stop saying that, cause she, every time you say that, she said that's not true. She okay, then. Well, she, she just didn't think she about. Just, she was worried about your intentions, and then you have to think about it. <laughs> I had been there all her life, so in her mind, you're taking my sister away. Well, listen, listen. What I'm gonna say is, you better now. I know you love me. Praise the Lord. Ooh, but ooh. back then, oh my God, I woo, I couldn't smile the right way. That is funny. And one of our our viewers, um, she mentioned, again, make that decision about the holiday plans now so that you can be on one accord. We mentioned that, you know, like I said, and it's so true. Sit down now. Make sure you understand that now. Make sure you understand the personalities of both of your parents as you're developing those plans. Yeah. Say, all right, now, now, you know when, when we say this and when we do this, your mama going to do this or your daddy going to do that. Now, let's make sure that we're able to address that as you're building your plan. Right. All right. And then make sure that their ex- the expectations are realistic. Right. Now, you know that if your mama, your your mother-in-law had her son and she oh, always daddy. wants to be with him and always wants to take over and be in the kitchen and do the cooking, and you want to do a little bit of the cooking. So don't say she can't be in the kitchen. Just say, okay, well, maybe – Maybe I'll allow her to do these things, right? And then we can share these these opportunities together in the right. kitchen. Right. Because it's all about it's all about because when you look at it, when you, like you say, it's, we're family. Right. So it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? We still got to have the open heart and the open mind to embrace one another. Right. But the thing is, is that we have to make sure because we have some people that just have that type of personality that takeover type of personality, but it's like, you know, hold on, wait a minute, you know, this is just how, this this is what we've set for this household. You know, that's why I, I thank God for my brother because he was like, I remember him saying, oh, Mom, we don't do that. And it was just it, and that was it. I said, that was, that was all you had to say? He said, yeah. So guess, <laughs> guess what I did? Mean? Uh-uh, we don't do that. <laughs> And I said that just as confident, and you know, because I'm the baby, so it's like I didn't want to be like, oh yes, ma'am. But it was like, uh, uh-uh, I'm sorry, you know, mom, we don't do that. But then it what drew me, what drew me out was that it was like, oh, okay, then, and then, and that was it, and that was it, and that was it, and it was just like, oh shoot, it was that easy. But you know, of course, with some, when you're already already accustomed to always giving in, you might get pushed. Now, one thing I want you to understand. It's not that the parents are doing it intentionally. Right. It's just right, that right. it's like because you got to remember, when you have got when you get married, you have now have to put a whole, now you have to learn 
how to work together as one. Right. Then you're going to have to learn how to work together with other influences. Right. Because the thing is, when you have when you have your, the in-law influence, because it's just like this, even if I don't care if you can have the greatest relationship growing up, but now the relationship that you have with your mom, that you have with your father, it does not trump the relationship that you have with your spouse. And that's really important. Because it's the barriers that you set. Because it's just like, you know, my mom loves to get up and she likes to pray with me. Okay, well... That's cool. I got a problem with that. But if being wise to have time to pray, that means I'm just going to be in prayer a little bit longer. Because it's not saying that you can't do the things that you're accustomed to. It's just saying you have to make sure that you put it in this right priority. Right. Because if you, if you, well, like for me, it, you know, me and my wife, we pray in the morning. So then when mom comes to town, do I neglect the wife to pray with mom because I know she missed? No. Like I said earlier, that just means I have to be in prayer more because, which is prayer is always good, praise <laughs> the Lord, but because I got to make sure that what I still have still remains because this is the thing. Your in-law is going to go back home. Right. Are you going to leave? Right. So the thing is, like, how when <laughs> what we dealt with coming coming up through the ranks is that when we didn't have those barriers set, when we went home, I'm trying to tell you, I was quiet. And I was sitting back, and I remember me and one of my partners, you know, me and, me and somebody was talking. And I was like, no, I'm just going to let her be her for this moment because I'm sitting back and observing. He's still thinking she's running things. Uh, where you at? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, doing what I'm, I'm doing what I had already told you that we were going to do. Well, uh, I need the vehicle. What the? Wait a minute. Who you with? That, you know what I'm saying? It was that kind of thing. But for me and how I <laughs> dealt with it, I just sat back and let you do it. But now it's now become the issue that's getting ready to travel all the way back home because it's like, wait a minute, this is not who we are. This is not what right. we do. So it's important that even when you set those bar- when you when you set those guidelines, I like to I like to call it, when you set the guidelines in the beginning, don't try to go past it because then now you're gonna be now that whoever goes, you know, outside of the guidelines now they're going to be in the wrong if some if something takes place because you got to remember all the enemy need is just a crack. Just a crack. That's all they need, just a crack. Because if you make that room, if you make room for the enemy to have that crack, then guess what? Now you have more that you have to deal with when you get back to what's familiar to you. Basically, right. when you return home or when or when others leave. Right. Because now you have to now deal with the person that you came to the party with, that you just, <laughs> you know, straight, just basically told him that you're going to do whatever you're going to do. Now you're stuck with him, so with him or her, now you're going to have to deal with what the issue was. Right. Because now you're not on the same, now you're not on the same page. And if you're not on the same page, then guess what? Now you have an issue. And remember that your family, right? And they all love they all love the same person. Right. Like, that's the thing. They're, they, they all love your husband, or they all love you. And so now you have to understand how that's going to work now together in one unit amongst all the family. Right. But they, you all love the same person. Right, right, right. So because right. you all love the same person, figure out how you're going to make it work. Right. Right. That, and that is so key. There was a, uh, isn't there a couple of little points that we hit those points? Oh, yeah, we did. We hit those points. But I do want to stop now that we, you know, at a, a pause moment. Let's uh, see if there are any questions for um, when mm-hmm. Christians speak blog talk radio. Oh, yeah. You want to turn it on so you can. It didn't got quiet. I know. Any questions? <laughs> no questions. All right. And we will keep it moving. So um, there are. Well, we'll do it at the end. We'll do that at the end. Okay. So, um, and so, but you know, this is this is the thing because now you have to you have to remember the toughest thing is because when you start acting like a kid and I, okay, I, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give this one. So this past Christmas, um, we had an in law that came to visit, and it was. It was a little different because one thing that I had to recognize is that, you know, you don't really know me 
And so, you know, that's fine. That's, you know, it's cool and dandy. But my thing is, one, I'm never going to, one, when you're, when you come into, when you come into my house, I'm going to, you're going to always feel welcome. That's just, that's just how we are. Right. But I, I went, and I'm going to sit back, now mind now, because when you're in my house, it's a little different. It's not as different when I'm in, from when I'm in your house. But when you're in when you're in my house, you gotta remember what goes on in my. If I allow it, I'm held accountable. And for every for every for every husband that is out there, you have to understand that what you allow in your house, you're held accountable. Right. That's you are good. you are held accountable. And so my thing is not saying that you got to be what you <laughs> say. You don't have to be the warden. You know what I'm saying? But you just have to be mindful of what you allow. To go on in your house, right? And so, um, and so, and and how to say, so when when that individual came, um, for Christmas, I mean, it was it was great. We had big fun. We did. We had big fun, but I kind of saw, you know, certain certain things, and I had to pull, I had to pull wife to the side. You good? You straight? <laughs> Like I'm fine, we're good. I was like, okay, no, it wasn't nothing between us per se. It was <laughs> with what was going on, and so I had to make sure that she was straight because it's like some things that kind of make you think a little different, right? And so, and that's why I was like, huh, is all all is well? You know what I'm saying? Because it's not saying that you can't have fun. You just got you'll know when your spouse tend to change, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. You'll know even when yourself begin to change. So even wise, y'all, you have to make sure, you have to be you. That's what I was looking for. You still have to be aware of one another, right? What's the and even in being aware of one another, so because you know I'm all about transparency. Yeah, tread lightly though. <laughs> tread lightly. <laughs> So I'm about transparency, and I'm Tread about lightly. and I'm about Tread. help and I'm about helping people, right? Tread lightly. So don't mention. So when you have family that you know you're you're rebuilding relationships with, yeah. um, it, sometimes it could be a challenge, some because you're still learning one another. You're still trying to form the norm. You're still trying to figure out who they are. You're still trying to figure out yourself and who you are. And there are certain standards that you know we have in our household certain family dynamics that we have and certain um, belief systems that we have, even when it comes to the body of Christ. Right. 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 And so as you're moving and you're breeding, like as you're going through that process, there are times when, which is a great segue into there are times where you could get to a point to where you're upset or you could get to a point to where you're aggravated or you could get to a point to where you just kind of get agitated with a particular family member. And so what you want to do is determine that cool down period. Mm, determine ooh, determine what you're going to do if you both have set your standards and you're enforcing your standards and it still does not seem to be working. Determine what it is you're going to do to say, all right, so this is the deal. And this is how we do certain things. Either you can deflect the conversation or you can be direct and you can hit the conversation head on. You can determine if you want to just go ahead and nip it in the bud and <laughs> ruin the holiday or <laughs> or if you want to just say, you know what, this is my cool down period. This is what I'm going to do in this particular moment. I'm going to go ahead, finish preparing. We're going to have a good time. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then I will go outside or I will go and I'll, you know, just entertain the kids mm-hmm. or I will go and me and my husband will just kind of sit and we'll talk and we'll have our own dynamics or we kind of pull out a game board or something and just kind of change the atmosphere so that it could be a little bit lighter. But determine now what that cool down is going to be because what you don't want to do is be in the midst of the buildup and things explode and then the holidays are ruined. Go a different way. Yeah. So and even in even in moments like that, I love how I love how James one and verse two through four puts it. And he puts he says, My brethren. He says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Well, count it, still count it all joy that even when you find yourself being agitated, when you find yourself being frustrated, you know, due to the the new movement that has taken place, you know, in the home, especially during this time, because when you look at it, 
you got you're gonna get agitated when it go when you go do all the shopping, when you go online, the internet go down, somebody burnt the fish, somebody <laughs> drunk the soda. You know what I'm saying? You have a whole lot that's yeah. actually going on because now whatever, like if your in laws are coming to your house, now your everyday rhythm is now not the same. Right. So now you have a nap piece that's taken off, but yet count it all joy. And knowing this, verse three, knowing this that the triangle of your pace of your of your faith work is patience. But let patience have a perfect work in you that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. So you have to allow patience, you have to have you have to allow patience to do the work within you. So I mean I'm gonna tell you you gotta walk in faith because patience and faith go hand in hand if you ask me. Right. And so then that will help you. Like you said, you got to find that moment to take a breather and be like, woo, woo, stop, woo, stop, woo, stop. And, so, <laughs> and then you can go right back at it for, an, for, for another round, if you will. But right. it is, but it's these moments during the holidays is when I find that people tend to be the most patient and the most joyous. And so when you get to that point, because now everybody's happy. You right. got Thanksgiving, everybody going to eat good. Then you got Christmas, everybody going to eat good again. Now, if you have that in-law that can't cook, let me, let, me, let me give you just a little hint. You know how when you go to somebody's house and you don't want to be rude because you want to be able to taste all the food and you want to do all this stuff? Go get a little bit at a time. Small piece. Small. So that- get a taster. <laughs> get a taster. And, That's it. And what we used to do back Don't home, get a spoonful. And what we used to do back home was, you know, when I was was little, my mom, like, anytime we would go to somebody else's house to eat, she would make us eat at home first. (laughs) So you eat at home first. (laughs) So if you go to somebody else's house and they don't know how to cook. (laughs) Listen, you won't hurt them if you say, I'm full. (laughs) Then you aren't leaving there still hungry because. (laughs) You don't eat. You don't eat. Right. You had a little bit of something beforehand. Beforehand. I'm trying to tell you. So. I'm just telling you that's a little side note of some yeah. wisdom for you. So it, it's okay. Oh, my goodness, this looks good. Who made this? You already know if, if Betty May don't know how to cook, but she, <laughs> but she made the casserole. Uh-uh. Oh, this looks good. Who made this? Oh, Betty May made it. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> We're going to move to the next one. And, and Did you let somebody else fall for <laughs> And Eric and I, we have this thing, right? We have this eye contact. Stay away from that, John. <laughs> Stay away from we that. We have this eye contact right. deal. So if we, we do like a, um, <laughs> we go to somebody's house and we say something, right. <laughs> we, we always get just a little bit. Just a little cold. <laughs> and then as we go back, you know, it'd be like, oh, baby, did you have such and such? Yeah, I had it. <laughs> yeah, you already know. Yeah, I had that one coming. Where is that? Well, that's our, that's our cue. You might not want to get. You might not want. You might not want to touch that one, Slim. I'll never forget. We were. Um, <laughs> we were in Alaska, and we were home. <laughs> one of the holidays, and we were, <laughs> we were with some friends of ours, and so my aunt. I Somebody had, had made. Makes bomb sweet potato pie, so she has taught me her recipe. I've taken that recipe, re- recipe refined it, and it's amazing. Like we could do sweet potato pies for life all day, and um, but I only make them for the holidays. And so, <laughs> and so we went to this house, and they had some sweet potato pies. You know how sometimes sweet potato pies are thick. No, ain't no so, sometimes. Hold on, wait a minute. Let me clarify this one. <laughs> she makes hers very small. I don't know why. I don't know why. But you know how you make the you the make the sweet potato, potato pie, pie when it's still the paint. Yeah. Man, he was <laughs> Eric went and because I make really good sweet potato pies, Ooh. I don't eat everybody's sweet potato pies. And I, I don't I don't eat it after that after so, that situation. Eric went and but <laughs> he went and got this big old slice of sweet potato pie. Oh, <laughs> 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 then I tried to dry that mug of whipped cream. I eat whipped cream. 
was hilarious. Angela. I told her real quick. She'll be cut her piece. Oh, babe, you got a big piece. Let me get my mom. <laughs> <laughs> no. That, that was when we started the communication. <laughs> it was hilarious. Oh, it was, oh, oh my oh. goodness. <laughs> If my I, glasses are fogging up. It was hilarious. I, oh was my like, goodness. It was more like <laughs> Save yourself. <laughs> it was funny. So if you have to do a McDonald's run, like I'm today, trying, just, you better grab some fries. Do something before you go. Ooh. So that way, if you get there and the food isn't all that good, you already have something. Uh. You're not starving. Right? <laughs> You're not starving. It was Ooh. hilarious, though. So yeah, we do that, and it's yeah. So, so I'm, prep that. Pre- yeah. Prepare yourself and put different things in place now. Right. And then sometimes you do too. Like I know there are some couples who their holidays are different based on their culture. Right. So go ahead now and prepare so that if there are certain foods that you're accustomed to, for example, my our son he plays college football in Pennsylvania. Stop. And no, no, he plays college football in Pennsylvania, okay. and there are a lot of families there who are Italian. Oh man, yeah, so yeah. the food is bomb. Like, oh my food goodness, food is amazing. Food is but ready, you know, to man. But you know, I was used to Thanksgiving. We get mac and cheese, we get fried chicken, you I'm get a pound you. cake, you get all of this stuff. So when we went there, we were like, wait a second, huh. there's no mac and cheese. Lasagna. They were like, who does mac and cheese for Thanksgiving? And I was like, we do. <laughs> it was <laughs> they were lasagna. Like, huh? No, they do lasagna. They're Italian, so they have the bomb wedding soup. Oh my God! The um the lasagna all is kind of amazing. Salad. So it's all Italian food and based these, on their ooh, culture. It was a nice pasta thing. Ooh, them jokes. Was right. Good. So it's based on their culture and, right. and the anti pasta. That's the first time I had the best anti pasta. I, mean, I still that don't know was, what that is. That was bomb. She so, said, did you try the anti pasta? I don't know. I'm just ready. <laughs> what is it? Put it out to me. It was so good. <laughs> so I want you to just kind of remember that, that like I said, when especially when you're coming together and you this is your first time going to your spouse's, you know, family time for Thanksgiving or even if you're engaged and you're going for the first time, understand the different cultures in advance. Right. So that you know how to prepare yourself. And I'm telling you, if it's your first time going, just know the person that can't cook is going to try to friend you the most. Yeah. Because you'll be the first one to taste the food. Don't set your spouse up for them to take the fall <laughs> so they can be over the toilet the rest of the day. Don't do that. No, don't do that. Make sure you let them know. Baby, ah, uh, listen, they can't cook. Make sure whatever she tells you to grab, get a corner. At least when you wrap it up in bread, it won't hurt so bad. And then understand, too, about your children, if you have children, what the game plan is and the rules for your children. Yeah. Because, you know, you get around family, and we're from the South, so it Mm. takes a village to raise a kid is what we believe, and so everybody corrects your child. Right. Which isn't always a bad thing, but understand what your boundaries and your limits are for your family. And then, like, for us, we had to, like, for Eric, you know, my son is just a rough kid. And so it was like, nah, I got the right cousin that you need to play with. Hmm, go play with them. Because these, they rough too. And then, you know what I'm saying? And they got with him. <laughs> so, but it was great because it, he began to see something. He began to see something totally different. So at the same time, you also got to know, you have to know your kids. It's just like with my daughter. I was like, listen, you can't go talking like you be talking where you're going because you might get popped. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. So it's just like, uh, be careful. <laughs> so right. you just. You just, you have to let them know because of like I said I like said in the beginning how you structure your family is how you know is your household and so I understand everybody may not take to it so that's why you have to set you have to set those boundaries as you begin to head out um, or before or when they begin to come in so we're getting ready to come to the end we have a plethora of announcements that we would love for you all to come out so, and um and be uh, on the lookout for. And also, man, I'm telling you that God is also doing a new thing with Marriage Takeover as well. So don't leave. We have a, 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 nom, a phenomenal announcement coming up. Actually, a couple. So Marriage Takeover is going on TV. Wow. We are so excited. What? Oh, we're going to Oh, my goodness. We are going on TV starting December 15th. Um, You'll be able to catch Marriage Takeover live on the WBGR network where we will be live on Roku TV, Apple TV, and Fire Stick. 
at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So December we are 15th, Slim. Super excited about that. <laughs> We will continue to have the platform on When Christians Speak, Blog Talk Radio. We want to thank them so much for the platform that has um, set sail and God has opened up doors. So we thank God for the viewers. We thank God for When Christians Speak, Blog Talk Radio. And we thank God for you guys. Yes. Um, the we thank God for you. The Marriage Takeover Retreat is coming February 15th, 2020. Woo-hoo! registration will be open at the end of this month, so I want you to make sure that you get that, that you don't miss that. We also, again, have a date night, again, that's coming up this Friday, and it's starting at 6 p.m., so make sure that you register. Registration is free, but we need to know how many people to uh, let the chefs know to prepare for. And he's a bomb chef. He is amazing. I'll tell you, I know a few chefs, and all of them are awesome. (laughs) And if you want us to come bring a date night to a city near you or to your city, please email us, marriagetakeover at gmail.com, and we will plan to be able to come and see you in your city in 2020. We are excited about it. Visit our website, www.marriagetakeover.com. We also have a book coming that we are super excited about excited that will be a- available for uh, the retreat coming in February, Boom. and we will open it up. <laughs> we were gonna we're gonna open up the pre orders for those of you who will not be in the area for the retreat. We're gonna open that up so that you can have first dibs to the book and to uh, the journal if you're interested in that as well. All right, and the workbook and the workbook. So you'll have an uh, opportunity to be able to get that as well. The retreat will take place in the DMV area, D.C. Metropolitan, D.C., Maryland, uh, Virginia okay. area. The DMV, D.C., so, <laughs> Maryland, Virginia. So if you are in the area, come, come on out. out. If you want Marriage Takeover to come to your city next year, let us know. Let's um, talk about it. If you are a business owner and you would like to be able to be featured as we're going to this new platform, um, either here on When Christians Speak Blog Talk Radio or on WBGR like. Network, Please visit our website, email us, let us know so that we can get the advertisement up and running. Um, and then don't forget about Audible. Audible, again, is, uh, is a content that includes the unmatched selections of the audiobooks, the original audio shows, the news, the comedy, and more from some of the leading audiobook publishers and authors and broadcasters and the entertainers. You can select any book of your choice for free. Right. I wonder, did anybody go back and check out the book that we did last month? Because no, it was phenomenal. It got quiet. It got real quiet. <laughs> and then go to and download your free audiobook today. Go to audibletrial.com slash marriage takeover. Again, that is audibletrial.com marriage takeover for your free audiobook. We again want to thank When Christians Speak Blog Talk Radio, Reverend Ray Rose. And we want to thank you again for listening, for viewing in. And we appreciate you. We love you. And thank we you. want the best for you and your marriage, your family, your relationships. And remember, at the end of the day, for the in laws, it's family. It's you all love each other. Show love. Love covers a multitude of sins. Yes, it does. All right. We are family. <laughs> Whoa. God got all my homies, homies with me. me. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> we are family. Come on, come on. So we love you guys. We appreciate you guys. And don't forget about the Marriage Takeover Retreat coming in February 2020. We love you guys. We appreciate you. And we are Marriage Takeover, getting ready to pray and sign off. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We give you the glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, Father. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you have done in this broadcast, oh, God. Yes. Father God, we thank you for lifting the heaviness, Father. We thank you for stopping all the interruptions, oh, God. And so, Father God, we thank you for just having your way. Father, I ask that you continue to be with us as we depart from this place, but never from your presence. Yes. Father God, yes. continue to keep every listening ear, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, that they will continue to show the love to one another, even even in this time of holiday season that we're getting ready to go in. Continue to strengthen the couples now in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord God. Yes. Continue to make them one Father, one flesh Father, in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you. We bless you. We say this prayer you done, Son, Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Thank you for joining Marriage Takeover, Body of One, signing off. We love you guys, and remember the podcast. Every time we started last month, was it last month? I have no We idea. are having bonuses now on our podcast for just our viewers. So go oh, yeah. and Catch visit. the podcast because we got yeah, a bonus we, coming up. We got a juicy, uh, a juicy story we're going to share on the broadcast for the, oh, podcast. the podcast. So go and make sure that you download, you download the podcast. It is available on iTunes, Droid, and any online platform that offers podcasts. 
and just make sure that you search for Marriage Takeover, and you'll be able to listen to this show as well as the bonus on the very end. All right? We love you guys. We appreciate you. Mwah. Have an awesome holiday. Thank you for tuning in to Marriage Takeover. Connect with us on Facebook at Marriage Takeover. Hey, family. We are excited to have two new broadcasts added to the When Christian Speak Talk Radio Network. Marriage Takeover, The Body of One, hosted by Rev. Eric and Rev. Tamika Thompson. It airs every third Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our hosts cover a wide range of topics to help build stronger marriages. They leave nothing off the table. Our newest broadcast, R3, Real Life, Real Men, Real Talk, premieres Sunday, October 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and will air every second Sunday of the month. Our hosts, Elston Green, Cleophas Malone, Antonio Mitchell, and Ray Rose will create a space by men and for men to have real conversations. It's time to be free, men, from false standards and the expectations of society, family, and self. You don't want to miss this first show this Sunday, October 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness Prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Join us for our weekly broadcast, His Abounding Grace with Minister Vanessa Williams. That's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. On Wednesday afternoons at 1 p.m., join Reverend Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line. The dial-in number is 641-715-3580. The access code is 732-499. And Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Reverend Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work for an hour of worship, exhortation, and prayer. Reverend Ray and friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life for a word in season. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. First Mondays of every month at 7 p.m., be blessed with the teaching ministry of Apostle Shirley Jones on Lifeline. On third Mondays at 7 p.m., join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration, a broadcast of worship and ministries on the mission field. Second Saturdays of the month, join Reverend Curtis, Reverend Novena, and Minister Jordana for Bold and Beautiful, a youth and young adult broadcast setting the world on fire with the love of Jesus. All broadcast times 
our Eastern Standard Time. Hey family, I want to introduce our newest broadcast that joined us in 2018, The Marriage Takeover.